Well, okay, so we're back, and I don't know which commercial I put in there. It's probably Rosinol or Big Boulder. Maybe I made a new one. But we're back. Um, so did you see that, I think, is it is it Squaw that's extending through 4th of July for the first time in the history of the resort because they're still sitting on 700 inches? First time in the history of their resort. Wow, so cool. And I also saw some uh, um, recent re recently released Shane footage, McConkey, and it included some of his antics in Veil, vale. so that was pretty cool. Shane, uh, you know, was, yeah, it's, it's synonymous. Was with it squad was it the, was it was it the naked backflip through the mogul course? I uh, no, I don't think so. The one that that eventually sealed his fate, it sealed his fate in Colorado, which mm -hmm. whatever Veil, vale, Veil's kind of the they got McConkey Bowl somewhere. It's not in Colorado, but no, I forget where it's yeah, at. Uh, Maybe it's well. Did I did I ever tell you about the one time I met Shane McConkey? No, you got to meet Shane. McConkey? I got to ride with. Okay, so I got to ride what? with Shane. McConkey. Okay, so this was probably 10, 11 years ago. I was working at MSO in Silverthorne, yes. and uh, Rob Howland was the K two snowboards rep, and K two was doing an event for all the shops that sold K two. It was called Camp K two, and they rented, yes they rented yeah. Mount Baker for a private event. Oh, so cool! So, um. It was 200 250 bucks. You got a snowboard, food, everything. Three days at Mount Baker. You had to pay for your ticket. So I fly in, and we get to the RV place at Cruise America in Everett, Washington. I'm the only one in my group over 25, so I'm the only one that's allowed to drive the fucking RV. <laughs> I got I got all the degenerate Colorado regional kids. Like, we broke every single rule in that RV in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> They're smoking, smoking weed. They're drinking, drinking. in the bag. A AJ was skating up and down the aisle inside it. We're listening to metal music. We're driving. The guys are just sitting there the whole time. There's no snow. There's no snow. We're just getting closer to Baker, closer to Baker. Yeah. We get to Bellingham and we load up on food and we're like driving up the you know up the road to Baker and everyone's like, "There's no snow, man. There's no oh, snow." I was like, "I oh, just wait." We come around the corner and there's the Baker Road gap and there's just snow and everyone's just what? like, oh. "That's what you encounter." Like yeah. first yeah. thing is the Baker Road gap. The Baker Road gap. Oh, but what's even God. funnier? So while we were at Cruise America, someone grabbed my board bag and all my luggage and threw it in the wrong RV. So I had no luggage when we get there. <laughs> It's dropped like four feet of snow. It's wet. It's heavy. There's, There's that snow. And you yeah, got this nothing. is also the first time I met Danny Larson. Yep. And like I bumped into him by accident, and it was like a metal thief because it's K two. And they were like, it was like a metal thief. And Larson was the king. Of the yeah, yeah, plant, yeah, The jacket. Yeah, vest, yeah. You know, he's got the vest. Fucking... He's got this Iron yeah. Maiden shirt on. And he turns around, and I got the shout at the devil, Motley Crue world <laughs> tour shirt on. And he looks at me, and he's just like, I thought he was all pissed because I bumped into him. And he's just like. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, you're you're good, man. You you really dark list. soldiers of the dark. Yeah, army. yeah. So we end up finding my luggage and everything, and um, the first day, you know, we go up and ride, and it dumped five or six feet overnight, and so go up Baker, I'm like riding this rope line, and it opens up into these chutes, and I'm sitting at the top, and this dude just skis up with a Red Bull helmet, and no poles. <laughs> and he's looking at me, and I'm looking at him, and he's like, where are you going? I was like, oh, I think I'm going to go off that, oh, and drop awesome. that, and go through there. And he's like, I wouldn't do that, man. And I just look at him, and I'm like, yeah, like, what the fuck you know, buddy? <laughs> just like not realizing it's Shane McConkey. <laughs> so I proceed to drop in. Snow gives out. I hit a root. Fall I'm like down the spine. Hit a tree. Shoulder pops out. Uh, fall again. Shoulder pops back in. And I'm <laughs> laying there just like, Ugh. All defeated. Look and up. I look up, and there's McConkey throwing a backflip, just pointing at me, shit-eating grin on his face, and he just, like, skis past mm -hmm. me. I'm sitting there with, like, shoulders, like, Love like, ah! Like, he didn't tell you not to do it. He didn't tell that me not to do it. His, ethos, like, his, his own thing was, like, mantra. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. It's like, well, you probably want to go that way. And I'm like, oh, I got this. What the fuck do you know? Yeah, Red Bull. It's got a goddamn yeah, Red know. Bull helmet on. And you fucking... 24-year-old Averin over there just like, I know what the fuck I'm doing. He says, I wouldn't do it. I would. Yeah, he says, you are on your own path. You're on your own, buddy. Of, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Of discovery and enlightenment. Whatever, though. Like, after that, we were like, he Threw was, he was, he was further out. down, and I, I sent something, and he was stoked. But, mm. yeah, McConkey was a cool dude the one time I met him. and uh, That was at Squaw? No, that was at Mount Baker. Oh, sorry, Baker. Baker. Yeah, yeah that was at Baker, sense. so... So that's the one time I met the man, the myth, the legend. Wow, um, so cool. Yeah, that was really cool. That was a cool trip, though. The, all the pros were there, and you got to you got to interact. It was it was when I I first discovered Leanne Pelosi's alter ego, Party Pelosi. Ooh, that girl could send it. <laughs> she was. I just remember looking over and I was like, "That's Leanne Pelosi!" Boom! I just got kicked, and I was like, "What the fuck?" She's a Canuck. Yeah, she's a Canuck. Those Canucks have a gear. Oh, dude, they they, they, they drink a on a different level. Uh -huh. uh, but that that whole trip was funny. And then, um, so we had two RVs for the 
Rockies crew from Colorado. So there was like, and I ended up with all the young bucks from Steamboat. So it was like Eric Van Esch, Nick Belowski, um, just a whole bunch of kids that just partied hard, just were partying hard. And we were coming from elevation. You want to talk about, they gave you 10 drink chips a night for three nights. And if you went over them, you went over them. So I, I don't, I had one beer while I was there because I, I, I can't, you know, I can't really drink because I'm missing a spleen. Um, the level of partying and debauchery that those kids did. And then we would wake up and get first chair every morning. It was hilarious because there's this group of kids from Jersey. And the kid's like, I brought my big board. It's like, your big board? He's like, yeah, it's 148. It's like, <laughs> welcome to the Northwest, fucker. You're dead. Baker. They went up the chair. The first chair made it to the top. Freaked out at all the snow, rode down, and did not leave their RV for the next two days, pretty much. Mm. Like, you'd see them cr- randomly come up for food, and then they'd scurry back. They were just like little rats. You, like, turn on yeah. the lights, and they're like, ah! and scurrying over there. And it was so funny, because the Colorado guys, <laughs> Eric ended up breaking, I think, three boards in two days. Yeah. Like, we were... Sending. Well, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite was AJ, uh, who's now a Smith rep, good homie of mine, great dude. He's like, yeah, I'm going to drop off this cornice. And he walks out on the cornice and he's jumping up and down. And he's like, yeah, this is, this looks stable. And it just breaks. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes down and buries him. And he's like digging himself out. And he's like, it's like, you fucking right. Now he's a super backcountry guy. And, yeah. you know, it's so funny because at the time he was still like young punk ass jump jib kid and shit. But he did send the shishkin arm while we were there, which was awesome. I think uh, he got a photo from that. Yeah. So Camp K2, if K2 would ever do that event again, I would be there in a heartbeat. Um, it was amazing. The snow was absolutely fucking amazing at doing it. It was, it was cool just to see you'd come down the hill to get down to the main chair and go back to the lodge. And there's 200, 300 cruise America RVs. It was all like K2 ski, K2 snowboard people nice. there, you know, Gretchen was there. It, it was, it was just a really crazy time. And, um, it was fun. You know, all the marketing people were there that you knew. They brought a mini ramp in and put it in a heated tent. So you nice. Stay. No shit. I'm yeah. excited to do some skateboarding, and um, I'm working with uh, Street Kingpins, which is a mobile skateboarding app for yeah. my buddy Ian Smith, Smith and Mark, Mark Hoyt. Hoyt. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so we're going to be touring around to some of the skate spots all along on this journey as well. And uh, you can Are you going to get Sean to skateboard? And, yeah, he's not bad. You know, Sean's a good snowboarder. For a ski, well, you know what's funny is he actually went to uh, Slash and Burn. I got a great. He got cr- maybe crash one of the crash of the years on on the hill. Yeah, but uh, took offense right out. But the best part is he went to the Slash and Burn Bank Slalom and did not get dead last. And he's a skier. He's a good skier. He's yeah. a damn good yeah, skier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he uh, can bullet. He that can was bullet. super fun. Yeah, I used to work with Sean at the liquor store. Uh-huh. Uh, he and I would, he and I would get bored and chase each other around and throw um, the hand grenades of Mickey's at each other and. Shit, it was funny. I'm Speaking just... of skateboarding, I got to skateboard once inside of the Food Kingdom with Kyle and Yana when it was getting remodeled. Um, they had removed all the you didn't all sk- the you shelves. Didn't, you didn't skate in the liquor store when we remodeled that. Not exactly. It? No, not quite through the liquor so, store. The back connects. But yeah, Chris, yeah. <laughs> Chris Cassetta that works with me there yeah. is a super good skateboarder. Super good skater. He, he completely destroyed the shelving because we were tearing it out. He just... Started all in on it, grinding it, just sliding it, just bending it, breaking it apart. I've got a video of him somewhere where he kicked through one of the walls and the whole thing just like toppled. Um, yeah, he's the man, dude. I just saw an awesome trick of his. It was like a faky nose bash to board slide. To board slide, yep. like just bashed it, came over the ledge. Yeah, no. To board he's slide. a good snowboarder too. Yeah, like, I got a good he, on the hill edit with he, him and he, Andy Mann and Jackson. Yeah, he comes out of nowhere and then just throws snowboard tricks and then he'll be like, I "Fucking hate snowboarders." I know I it just looks so skateboard. It's awesome. I yeah. love watching him. Yeah, I, I just gave him. him a, a, I actually just uh, gave him my old board because he uh, he was riding this thrash to shit capita that was uh-huh. a little too narrow for him. And I was yeah, like, Yo, yeah, here, just ride this thing into the ground, old Arbor West Mark. So. It's a good thing, though. Chris is a good kid. Um, but, yeah, so you're going to get Sean to skate on this trip. Ah, sure. Totally. This is going to be funny. Ideally, or hopefully. Yeah, it's, it's funny, though. Skateboards. Yeah. We're excited. We're going to take those Colorado skateboards out west. Well, on a plus side, though, I mean, his mom has that house in Mammoth, so you got free lodging while you're there. Nice, because when I lived there last, I was living in the cheapest employee housing, the Uller and the White Stag, and I don't the think they're Uller. there anymore. No, the Uller yeah. isn't there. I got a funny story about it. So when I The Uller death hack. <laughs> right. So when I first moved to Summit County, uh, I lived with four other dudes in a two-bedroom, two-bath, and I shared a bedroom with an 18-year-old, I think he was 17 at the time, kid named Kay. 
It's not his real name, but uh, and he, he's an illegal immigrant in the country. <laughs> which is, is he like Korean? No. No. No, he was Brazilian okay. or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, good old Tulio was his real name. And uh, so I shared this room with him and he was like, yeah, dude, I quit school when I was like 14. And I, I, <laughs> I, I went to Mammoth and I lived, I lived in the Uller on a floor in a bedroom between two other dudes, like four other dudes. He slept on the floor between yeah, the bunks totally. illegally. And uh, they used to have to roust him when they were checking the rooms and hide him and shit. And he would poach Mammoth every single day and just snowboard and uh, and not do shit. I've, I've had a lot of funny adventures, actually, with that kid. Like the time we went to Canada and he had his green card with him for the U.S., but his name was spelled wrong on it. And, and I thought they weren't going to let him back in from Canada. And mm-hmm. mind you, this was my buddy's wedding, and he drank a whole bottle of Jameson at about 3 in the morning. So he's sitting in the back of this car that has no seats on a sway bar, and it's just vibrating, and he's turning green. Turning in. Oh. And, and, the, and you can tell the border agent is, like, typing, and he's like, look at this, look at this kid's turning green. He's like, do you guys have anything to declare? We're like, no, and Katie's like, I'm going to puke. How about and, that? And, That's what I got to luckily, declare, yeah. someone in the next lane drove their car right through the stop sign. And oh, didn't stop. Blessing. And he's just like, get out of here. we got to go deal with this. We made it about 10 feet into the U.S., and that kid spewed Jameson chunks all over the countryside. Just like, just destroyed it. He was so, oh, man. But yeah, that that kid, um, I've been on so many adventures. Like, his 21st birthday, I ended up having to carry him all the way through Dillon Valley. He was so drunk. So I got him by, like, the back of the pants and the back of the neck, and I'm just dragging him up the sidewalk. He's dropping his wallet, his shoes. The next day, he had to go down. (laughs) Digging the snowbank because the plow had come through, and he's oh like looking for God. his shoes. Looking he's down there shit. barefoot. <laughs> the he was like but yeah, he lived in the fed. he lived in the Uller, completely illegal for about three months until they finally caught him, and he's like, oh, "I'll just leave." It was so funny. They're yeah, like, "Why don't you just get a do? job?" And he goes, "I'm 16." I'm 16. 16. Yeah, They're like you've been there for two years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that's oh, good, yeah. dude. I remember the one time I went to Mammoth. I was uh, working with Echelon Snowboards, and we were doing Patch Fest up in Tahoe, and then we were going to drive back. Patch to... Fest. I want yeah. to see this. Patch Fest actually goes on every year. They just don't blow it up like mm-hmm. they did. Yep, uh, yep. Dwayne and Andrew keep it really low-key. Yep. I don't know if they're doing it this year because Dwayne just had a kid, and Andrew's building a truck house. Okay. But uh, we went the back way in the Hummer that we were driving. Uh, we ended up blowing the differential or something, and we ended up having to get towed from the backside of Mammoth, like between uh, Kirkwood and Mammoth, like in the two lane roads. Yeah. And we ended up crashing at a dude's house. And it was the one time I went to Mammoth and I'm like walking around there going, God, this place is kind of shitty. <laughs> it was like, su- it, they hadn't had snow in years and it was just <laughs> yeah, super yeah, yeah, yeah. dusty and uh-huh. deserty. And I was like, and everything was like a cinder block building. I'm like, God, d- d- Good. This just further proves why I do not want to ever live in California Man, I'm ex- again. I'm excited to go back to some old spots and see if they're still there. Maybe see if some of my old friends are still there. And uh, uh, maybe make some new friends. If any of y'all are hearing this, I'm, I'm heading your way and I'd love to shred with them. Well, Crowbar's out there. Yep, yep. So he'll be out there. Dylan's out there. Chris Corning's out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Brett Esser just got there. Benji's out there. Yeah. Benji's out there. So there, there's a bunch of the homies that'll be out there probably ripping around and shit. So... Yeah. I love it in the spring, dude. It's super yeah. cool. It's super cool out there. Hopefully that Mexican restaurant's still there. Which it's one? Cinco de Mayo here, actually, now. Drinco de Mayo. I think it's called Salsas. Oh, it's still there. A-Frame. Yeah, it's still Over there, there on yeah, the no. mountainside uh, of the road yeah. by the post office. Yeah, because we went there and got tacos or something, or oh, burritos. Hell so yeah. last time I was there. Oh, since I'm there. excited. You going to stop into uh, Mountain Wave? Or, uh, not Mountain Wave, uh, Rave Wave? Or Mount, whatever. It's called Wave Rave, yeah. Wave Rave. Yep, wave totally. Rave. Yeah, P3's there as well. So mm-hmm. there's some good local shops in yeah, that yeah, town. Yeah. Stop in and see those. those uh, the JLA Skate Park. and uh, Yeah, Volca Brothers, I, yeah. yeah. What was I going to say? Um, yeah, I'm excited just to really get a little bit of boredom. Uh, without having to film every single second of it, but we're going to still be making some cool edits. Yeah, well, that's good. Um, I mean, you, obviously, because we won't have a podcast for this until you, until I get back from my brother's wedding and you mm-hmm. get back, it'll be good to see what the trip report was for you and everything. You're not going up to Hood now, are you? I, I'm going to see. I would. Okay. Uh, I uh, have it as a destination in mind um, okay. because I would like to to make it there. I wasn't able to go last year. Actually, we left uh, f- this day last year, the 5th of May, was when we were headed out. Okay. And uh, so here we are, one year later. One year later. Yeah, check yeah. it out. We're going westward. Yep. Um, That's so, good. Yeah, dude, it should be pretty cool. You remember this time last year we were riding POW pretty much, still? Totally. 
<laughs> um, and it's going to happen again, I think. I think I there's think another some snow coming. coming next Thursday, so about a yeah. week from now. If my knee's good, I'm going to go try to ride it. I'm, I'm literally... I'm literally duct taping my leg back together oh, to just bang yeah. through these reviews, and then I'm taking a couple weeks off. Yeah, it's a that. trip when you're riding full on pow in the spring like that. You it's heavy. You are like, it's heavy. It's a little different, but it rides a little thicker, and you don't have to. You can send stuff more. Yeah, it's kind of um, holds you up a little more because it's denser. Yeah, but it gets you flipping if you catch too. Well, you, you know, yeah, no, it's it's, it's, uh, it's a little heavier. It is a little heavier. Yeah, so it's crazy. I think Loveland's closing like the fifteenth. I, w- I didn't make it to Loveland this year. So uh, it might be their last day. I saw some posts today from the peeps that were like last day for me. Oh, Maybe it was just that last day of them working. Oh, I bet you this is the last weekend. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're probably closing this weekend on the seventh. They're probably closing early. Normally they close Mother's Day. I thought so. That's right. So you know, if you're listening, Mother's Day, Mother's is Day up. send your mom a card. Hi, mom. Miss you. Yeah, Love you. Mom, mom, number one fan. I know you're listening to this. I'm dead serious. My mom likes and shares everything. No clue what I'm talking about. Yeah, super cool. I actually, you know what? I've got a new podcast series I've been working on called Angry Ask. I've got two of them already in the can, so I'm going to drop those when I'm gone. If you guys think I should interview my mom about <laughs> me and snowboarding, leave me a comment. Let me know because I'm going to have a week with her that I could. <laughs> That's good. I could interview oh, Lynn. And let me I, tell you. Then I want to interview her about you and snowboarding. Oh, my or, God. You know, like the behind the scenes. Or no, like I don't the, think people understand how. Behind the actor's studio. My mom, my mom is my number one fan. But what was even better was uh, I was in a, a battle one time with Nope Snowboards, the shitty brand out of Park City. I can't even call it Park. They, they were from Park City. The dude moved there and tried to buy his way into the snowboard season. Or uh, scene. Uh, anyways, this dude, Brian, that ran it, it was a fucking tool. He got a U.S. snowboarding tattoo on his arm. He's like, yeah, see, I'm down for the cost. It's like, you're down for what? U.S. snowboarding? <laughs> you bone flicker. But uh, he started trying to call me out on Facebook, and he's like, yeah, you and your trust fund. My mom legitimately got on there. Got on there. And this is, and I quote, she's like, well, we had $20 in a trust fund for him, but I spent that on cigarettes or something like that. She said some stupid offhand comment. And I was like, see, my mom doesn't even give a shit about your brand. Yeah, that's my, mom, my mom is just the perpetual badass because she has always supported me in snowboarding. When I was in high school, my school, Cataraugus Central School, and then we merged to be Cataraugus Little Valley Central School, a bunch of fucking dumbass hick. Stupid bullshit. Cataraugus is the name Cataraugus. of Cataraugus. It means smelly <laughs> banks. Can't even fit that on the... You gotta like write it all no, the man, way yeah, across yeah, your... yeah, yeah, you can. It's C A T T A R A U G U S. It's pretty easy. But uh, <laughs> no, so my mom, my mom used to legitimately call the school because she would check the snow report and be like, "Everyone's sick today." That she'd load me in the car and drive me to Holiday Valley and be like, "Go snowboard, son." And I got, I remember on my, I got suspended for my 18th birthday because this teacher was batshit insane, legitimately like she was off her meds. And she just freaked out on me because in the senior lounge, I turned on the Dukes of Hazard to watch a TV show. And she went on this whole tirade about how I was a misogynist racist. Yikes. And I'm sitting here going, but my, my best friend's black. Like, like yeah. where are we going yeah. with this? Yeah. And uh, so she ended up freaking out. And the school took her side, which was typical because I didn't play sports. And, you know, I wasn't going to be a farmer. Mm-hmm. So uh, I got suspended. So she straight up went in, her and my dad went into the school to deal with it. And they were like, fine, whatever. He's going to go snowboarding. I don't even give a shit. And it was right because my birthday was right before Christmas break. I got three extra days. I got to go snowboard. My mom, total badass, total supporter of me and snowboarding. I mean, we didn't have a lot of money growing up. She did what she could to get me snowboard gear, even if bless her soul, like the time she ordered me a set of size 13 Vans high standards. I have a size 10. <laughs> But she, you know what? Bless her soul. She, mm-hmm. she, I love that woman more than anything. She, her and my grandmother were really the reason. That used to be like a, often it would say like list your sponsors, and the joke would be mom. But that is it's not a joke. It's very a much joke. the reality that any snowboarder. Yeah, no, <laughs> mom, one hundred percent. My pop. dad, my dad was really good at driving me to and from the yeah. resort, and I'd give him money for gas and stuff when I didn't have a license or a car, and. Yeah, my, my parents. So, anyways, to go back to that point, if you guys think I should interview my mom, leave a comment because I know she's down for this. And I will do a whole segment of angry asks with her about nothing about 
except me and Snowbird, and we can talk about like when I ruptured my spleen and the thoughts she was going through, <laughs> how she how she used to deal with me having failing grades. I mean, this one this is a woman that made a deal with me. You give the basic minimum to scrape by, you can snowboard. <laughs> she knew. She just yeah. Knew. She, she was straight she up. She just with gave it. up yeah, on it. Yeah. She just was like whatever. She wasn't bargaining for no, anything. No, she she knew right away that I was bored with that school and they didn't do anything to stimulate my brain, and just fucking amazing. So I'm gonna do an interview with my mom. Maybe we'll get her to call in on a later episode. That could be That'd another be thing. And then I'll have Zach interview her on here. Yeah, I'll work out <laughs> some <laughs> questions. Too. All right. But we're going to take another break, shove another commercial in here, and we'll be back in a minute. 